and upon us. He will subdue, he will subdue our iniquity, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. That's right. He said he's gonna cast our sins into the depths of the sea, man. He said he's gonna cast our sins into the depths of the sea, man. Call Allah Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Call Allah Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Man. You know? We live in it. I gotta tell you something, brother. Yes, the name sir. of the heavenly father is Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. That's right, brother. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. Yes, sir. Yahweh Shah. That's right, brother. Thank you, my brother. That's right, brother. Thank you, brother. That's right, brother. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shah. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shah, bro. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shah. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shah. My grandfather sold the church before I even came home. Nah, brother. This is a church, brother. We're a we a congregation of men, bro. Nah, bro. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shah. That's right. How why you how was Shah? That's right, brother. You know, our, 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 the Lord is great, man. The Lord is magnificent. You know, his wonders are going to be into the end of the earth, man. Uh, give me uh, Matthew, I think the fifth chapter. Let's, let's go to that real quick. Shalom. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, the Holy One of Israel, whom the world ignorantly calls God. In the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. Those men that are doing his work in sincerity and truth, the hopeful elect. All right. And uh, along with you, one third, you uh, men, women and children are listening, learning and believing in all sincerity and humility. To you all, I say shalom and greetings and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the spirit. All right. Um, so as you just saw the clip before. Um, there was an individual, um, and we, we, we talked to him for a while. Um, he actually ended up getting a Hebrew name, which is Kwaha, um, which means to be set on edge. Um, this man, uh, we believe to be homeless. Um, you know, we, this is the first time we've ever seen him. All right. This is the first thing, or well, at least I, I don't believe any of the other brothers seen him before. This is the first time I ever saw him, but I believe as a unit, this is the first time we've ever seen him. And, um, you know, this is why you can't go based on appearances. You know, this is this is why the scripture talks about uh, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You know, there's different levels to that. But this is one of them. Right. This man who we perceive as a homeless man, he didn't have much to his name, you know, um, and he had, he was listening from across the street for a while. And then um, he came over and at first you know, he was just listening to us, but then he was like, yeah, you know, um, y'all the Israelites, right? You know, he sat down on the ground and he was listening, you know? Um, and so the brother had a, a very meek and humble spirit on him, you know, and we ended up giving him a couple dollars, you know what I mean? But it, it wasn't about the, uh, the alms, but I'm, the reason I'm bringing that up is because the man was so humble that when one of the brothers gave him some money, he tried to give half of it back. You know, and it was only a few dollars, man. And he tried to give half of it back, which lets you know the humility in this man. A homeless man, you know, when people you meet people uh, that have that that spirit of um, taking and panhandling and stealing. This man didn't have that spirit on him. You know, he just wanted to eat. He just wanted to do what was necessary. But at the end of the day, this man, obviously, you know, he, I'm not saying he's about to just keep all the laws, statutes and commandments. That may not happen, but he was giving us his testimony and his story and things like that, man. The next thing you know, this brother was screaming the name Yahweh Shai, man. And call Law Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. He was screaming the name. You saw the clip, man. The man was crying. The man was in tears. The brother had uh, other brothers in the camp crying, man. This is a very, very touching moment through the spirit, you know. And so I, the Lord put on my spirit to want to share with the Akim, you know. But I want to get this precept. I have quite a few precepts on this, but... You know, it's all through the spirit, man. This is just a, a, a beautiful moment. And it, the scriptures confirm 
This is why we doing this, man, right? When we go out to the highways and byways and we read in Jeremiah 16, right? And telling people that we're looking for the fishers. We're looking, we're fishing to try to, to fish them, right? We're trying to, uh, the Lord says, I will make you fishers of men, man. This is what it's about. Finding brothers that, that crying out to the Lord, man, even of his, even in his affliction, you know, even in his situation, a man like this calling out the name Yahweh Shai, you, he believed you could tell, man, you know, you run into scoffers and people that don't believe they're not going to call on a name like that. This man had more conviction than most people who I've heard in the truth, you know? Um, but I want to get this scripture. This is Psalms 34 and 17. I'm going to start at 15. It says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth out of them all. You see? So... Is this man out in the highways and byways doing the work? No. Is this man doing lessons? No. Because this man possibly be keeping some of the law that just come in. Like he even said, I know not to eat pork. The Bible said don't eat pork, you know. And so it's things that he may know. But this is where the scriptures come in and say, the Lord going to have mercy on whom he going to have mercy. The Lord going to have compassion on whom he's going to have compassion. And I pray the Lord, I do, man, that the Lord have a, a healing for this brother, Right. I pray that the Lord have mercy on this man. You know, I pray that the Lord convert his spirit to get what he need to do to get on the chariot, man. And I, I mean that sincerely. You know, if you would have just felt the energy that was happening at camp, man, it was it was it was heavenly, man. It was heavenly, you know, and things like this. When we, we cry out, we know, uh, you know, the crying out is in multiple ways we cry out we sigh and cry uh on the highways and byways but brothers literally be in tears man you know so the lord is looking for those that are of a broken and contrite heart man you know that are really humbly seeking the lord all right this is a uh, malachi 4 and 2 it says but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall grow for, go forth and grow up as calves of the stall you know, he says those that fear his name, man, the uh, the Lord is coming with healing in his wings, man, to save, to save the elect, you know, to deliver us from these gruesome situations that we're in, to deliver us from under the foot of our oppressors and the foot of our enemies. And those who understand that they're Israelites and those that understand how powerful that name is, they, they seeking them, man, and they, they, their spirits are crying out in one way or another. You know, his lot may not be to come out to the highways and byways. He might not get everything. He's been through a lot, man. You know, but the Lord will have mercy on men like this, right? The Lord will have compassion on men like this. This is a uh, second Samuel 22 and verse seven. It says in my distress, I called upon the Lord, Yahweh. And cried to my power, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. You know, when we're, we're crying out, hey, man, you know, this man probably been calling on Jesus, you know, because he said he had the man so humble. The, the dude said, I had a Bible, but somebody else needed it, so I gave it away. You know, not, not maybe not the best decision. All right. Because that Bible is, is key. But nonetheless, if, if I see him again, I told him I have one for him at camp. Maybe not the best decision, but that it's to him it was about giving, right? He didn't look at it like this is something that I I need to truly hold on. He knows that through his spirit, but he felt like that Bible was going to be more beneficial for him than himself, right? That's charity, man. That's charity, you know. Um, but th this man, he he touched us. He really did. He touched. He touched our spirits. You saw he went around and he hugged all the Akim. That's never happened at camp before. You know, that's never happened at camp. Uh, at, at this camp, at least, you know, to go around. And, you know, I've had people, you know, you've had people to come around and dap you up, pound you up, you know. Yeah, like, all right, bro, I feel you. I feel you. this man went around and hugged every brother. And it wasn't it wasn't due to the money. It wasn't due to um 
us being overly nice. It wasn't nothing like that, man. It was the spirit, man. And this man was convicted in the spirit that the Lord's word were words were faithful and true and that he was going to be saved, man, that he could be saved from this hell, you know? And, and see other people would shun this man, right? Other people would talk about him, demean him, you know, talk about how he looks, the things he has, you know, but the men of the Lord, Lord willing, we be at that number. We see the, the righteous spirit. We see the, the glory of Yahweh by Shem Shai. For this man to cry out on the name like that, man. And this is why we say there's power in the name, man. Excuse me. It's power in that name. This is the only name that's going to get you saved, man. This is 2 Chronicles 20 and 9. It says, If when evil come upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou would hear and help. You see? And now we're building the house of David. You know? So all of these evils that's going to come up, evil means bad time. All of these bad times that's about to take over the earth. Right? You got the heavenly father, and his son coming down to save and help his elect man to save those people who believe on the name. This is why we tell so many people that the name is vital to salvation. The name is vital to uh, your survival, man. You know, that name is vital. If he, that man don't remember nothing else, he's going to remember two things. He's going to remember how you felt. and He's going to remember that name. And then after shortly after this clip, he asked us to write it down. This is how you know he really believed, man. He asked us to write it down. And it, when he, when he, before he left, he said, "Hey, man, you know, for he, first of all, he feared. He, he, he you had to use you. He say, man, I'm, you know, it's a presence over here. It's an energy over here. He kept saying stuff like that. And then, as he was, you could tell after he had the name, his whole countenance changed because for a second we thought before we saw him across the street, we thought he was going to be bugged out, right? He was like talking to himself. He was in a, a lower state. He was worried about some things. But when he left, next thing you know, he was singing. He was raising his hands in the air. He was giving glory to Yahweh Hashem Shai. You know, and it just reminded me of King David. When King David came back and he was about to, he was coming into the town. And I sent the precept to a brother last night about how King David came back. And he was giving brother, uh, giving men and, wine, and women uh, a piece of flesh and uh, uh, wine, and he was singing and dancing and rejoicing before the Lord. You know, that's what it reminded me of, man. And even, you know, the brother, he, uh, somebody, I guess, gave him a cigarette. And I said, hey, bro, you got to put that cigarette out. You can't smoke that. He put it out instantly, man. You know, and does this mean he going to stop giving up cigarettes? Probably not, man. You know, but I still pray the Lord have mercy on this man. You know, because our people have been through a lot, man, and especially some spirits more than others, man, you know, but the Lord ain't the Lord says the Lord is looking for those people that given that effort that are that are crying unto that name. Hey, because like I was saying, it's, it can be a, when when Jacob's trouble comes. Right. And this man. Uh, so all of those drugs that he may have had problems with those cigarettes that all of that stuff, he's not going to have access to. So a lot of these people who've been on those type of things are going to sober up, right? They're going to truly sober up. And this man is going to remember the name of the Lord. Sirach 17 and 10, it says, And mine elect shall call on praise, shall praise his holy name, his holy name. You know, this man's going to remember that. This is a uh, Job 34 and 28. It says, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him and the, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. You see that this man is afflicted. He was telling his story about the things that he's gone through. This man is afflicted, but the belief in the Lord and, uh, and, and having that strong confidence in that faith, you know, because the scriptures say, um, he winked at our ignorance, right? So the Lord was looking over a lot of the things that we did, man. 
a lot of the wickedness. And that's the scripture that Brother Gabar was reading at the time was uh, uh, Micah, the seventh chapter. And about the 18th and the 19th verse, which talks about the mercy of the Lord and how he's going to engulf our sins in the depths of the sea, man. You know, uh, uh, this, we're, we're working with a God of mercy that's going to overlook our transgressions. That's going to overlook our iniquity and our sins. That's how powerful our Lord is and how he's a God of mercy. He loveth, he delighteth in mercy. This is Job 36 and 13. It says, but the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. You see that? The, the wicked, when he binds the wicked, they don't cry out. You know, if they do, it's in vanity. Lord, if you'll save me out of this one, then I, I'll, uh, I'll do right from now on. You know, that's what two thirds say. But they don't sincerely believe that. They don't sincerely act according to their ways as far as righteousness goes. And definitely the wicked, Esau, he, he, he think he's a God himself. He think he can deliver himself. Right? This is why we need to follow after the Lord, man, because we know there is no savior but Yahweh Shai, man, through his father, Yahweh. And Israel... All of you idiots out there who think you don't need a savior, you are wrong because everything that you've tried according to your flesh has failed. You need something different in your life. And the, 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 the solution is Yahweh Shai. He, his name literally means he delivers, man. He saves. That's literally his name. That's, it's an omen nomen. This is Psalms 40 and 1. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. You see that? Wait, we got that's the description talking about wait, waiting patiently for the Lord, man. Right? Wait patiently for the Lord and, uh, for him to uh, uh, deliver to pray, man. You know? He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. And out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You know, the Lord put a new song in our mouth, man. When we were out singing folly, we were singing doctrines of wickedness. We were singing Christianity and, and Islam. We were singing uh, nonsense, man, and things that were not going to benefit us. But the Lord put a new song in our mouth, man, the song of righteousness, the song of truth, the song of understanding and wisdom. So many shall see it in fear, and that's what they do when we out on those streets. They see it and they fear, man. That's why the Lord's name is going to be magnified throughout all the earth. It says, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to the lies. Right? Because now we've heard the truth. So why should we turn aside to any of the lies that's out there? So that man is blessed. This man is going to be blessed. If he, make, he making the Lord his trust. He trusted in the Lord before he even knew he was an Israelite. You know? But our people are waking up. Right? We didn't say, oh, you got to be a rich man and a baller to be, uh, to believe. You know? They, they say you got to, in, in churches... Right. They, they, the more money you got, the more blessed you are. Right. But like I said, this man will get beamed up before all of these men with these great wealth and riches, before all of these celebrities, before all of these wicked church pastors. Right. This is Psalms 145 and 19. I started uh, 17. It says the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. You see that? You got to call upon the Lord in truth, man. You can't be saying Jesus, Jesus and expecting salvation. Because that just don't add up. That's not what's written, man. This man was screaming the name Yahweh Shai. He knew it was power in that name. He knew it. And that was my first time saying it to him. He didn't stumble over it. 
He didn't make any mistakes and he started screaming it, man. You know, another guy, you know, people could have been like, oh, yeah, okay, you're howling how shot the water. And there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, you know, if you if you just receive the name and keep it pushing and tighten your ways up. But it, this man felt it in his spirit. He was crying out to the Lord, man. Um, verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever, man. How can you get past this name, man? The Lord says it so many times in these scriptures. Over and over again, man. The, all of these verses that I kept reading, some of them I was looking for the word cry. and But I, the name just keeps popping up. The name keeps popping up. You can't get around it, man. And it's, it, that, that's why the scriptures say, with these words, you are comforted, man. This man, was his spirit was comforted after he left. After he left. He says, he said, before he left, he says, this is the safest, I, I feel safe here. This is the safest place I feel. That's what he said, man. And that we read in Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. That's why he feels that way, man. It's not because we sitting out there with armor on or we got guns. You know, it's not because we being carnal. It's not because we fighting off a uh, heathen form. He feels that way because the presence of the Lord is there. What the Lord said, when two or three are gathered in my name, right? There I am in the midst. So he felt the presence of Yahweh Shai there. And that's why he was calling on his name like that, man. This is a... Uh, Maybe not the most suitable scripture, but I still wanted to get it. This is Lamentations 2 and 9. It says, Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches. Pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. You see that? Because the spirits, even though we know this is a lot of times it's talking about Jerusalem, our homeland, Right? But this man was pouring out his heart like water before the face of the Lord, man. And that's what we do out when we go out to the streets. Right? Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children. And we know children is always uh, uh, actual children, man. We're called the children of Israel, the sons of Israel, man. That faint for hunger in the top of every street. And what's the hunger that he's that he's one for? The bread of, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh. I even quoted that, actually, now that I think about it. He said, uh, uh, bread, um, he, that Matthew, the fourth chapter, right? He says, um, let me just go ahead and read it so I don't butcher it. Man shall not live by bread alone. That's what I wanted. The Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the most high. You see? So he knew it wasn't just about getting his sandwich that he had in his hand. He knew that wasn't the only thing that was going to sustain him. He knew that the words of life are the real hunger and what he really needs to be satisfied, man. I'm going to go to the, uh, and our people are hungry out here. That's the thing. Our people are starving and majority of them don't even realize it. That's a, that's a, a detrimental situation where you're starving and you don't even know it. Because what consumes after that? Death. And that's why two-thirds of our people are spiritually dead, man. They're hungry and they don't even realize. And they're eating all the wrong things spiritually. Right? They're, cons they're consuming spiritual pork, spiritual lobster, spiritual crab, spiritual trash, man. That's what they're consuming. So it's not benefiting them. So they're just killing themselves off. And so soon, since they've, uh, for, it says that they have committed two evils. They have forsaken the Holy One and they have uh, com they have gone into broken cisterns, right? You've forsaken the Heavenly Father and you've gone after idol gods. This is Galatians 4 and 6. It says, and because ye are sons, the Most High has sent forth the spirit of his son 
into your heart saying into your hearts crying abba father you see that the lord sent his spirit out there man into the hearts of men into the minds of men crying abba father and that's what he's doing man we're calling on the names of yahweh and yahweh shai man all right i just got a a, a few more uh, I'm going to go to the book of Acts. This is Acts chapter 2. Acts 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, man. This man is calling on the name of the Lord. How many people have you told on, on those highways and they cry out like that, man. They calling on the name of the Lord. You know? This man probably walking down the street, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah. Just saying the name over and over again just so he don't ever forget it, man. You know? That's why I always tell brother, hey, when I wake up in the morning, you know, I say, call all Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Just, just to know that I still got that name on my lips, man. You know? And we do this in, in truth and in sincerity. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's that's what the Lord is looking for. People to call out. People to have faith on him and to lean on him. The Lord says, lean not on thine own understanding. Right? But lean on the Lord. He's the one who's going to establish our ways and, and send, give us our goings, man. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 51. Um, in verse 11, let me see, is there, yeah, I started 11. It says, I will praise thy name continually and will sing praise with thanksgiving. And so my prayer was heard for thou savest me from destruction and deliverest me from the evil time. Therefore, will I give thanks and praise thee and bless thy name. O Lord, when I was yet young. Or ever I went abroad, I desire wisdom openly in my prayer. You see that? So, hey, man, the Lord is going to deliver us from these, these wicked, evil times that are coming, man. All right? We got to constantly give him thanks and praise him and praise his name, man. All right? That's a huge separation from these people and, uh, and the, the, the righteous things, man. We have key ingredients to uh, the kingdom of heaven. Key ingredients to salvation. And that's the pot that we're trying to cook up in these last days, man. Salvation and righteousness. All right? And as I just want to make this last point and the last precept I got. As you notice, the brother kissed me as he walked away. The scriptures confirm that too. You know? There, uh, you know, there, certain brothers doing there's nothing wrong with that, man. And see, that's why, like, you have French and they think they get that kiss but on their own. Nah, man, that's scriptural. You know, and it doesn't always have to be a literal kiss, but this man still did it. And uh, the brother, um, the brother pops up in Chicago. When he, when you greet that brother, he gives you a kiss on the cheek, man. Right. This is second Corinthians 13 and 12. Actually, let me read 11. It says, finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace and the power of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, man. You know, so this brother was in the spirit and he may not even realized it, you know, but hey, I pray may the Lord have mercy on this brother and all you brothers and you, uh, and you few sisters that believe may the Lord have mercy on y'all as y'all cry and call upon the name of the Lord, the one only and true name of the heavenly father and his son, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. With that, I'm going to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.